If you're interested in learning how to get started with guidance, listen to the upcoming demonstration from our colleague Owen. He presents EasyDOE. That's a tool that guide, guides new users to the experimental plan they need in their situation, all the way from scratch to a final experimental report. Owen, please. The EasyDOE platform is a guided platform that users can use who are either new to Jump or new to DOE so that they are familiar with the DOE workflow before going through the other platforms available. As you can see here, everything is within one window, so it's a matter of simply going from one stage all the way to the end where you get your results. Furthermore, there are also hints here throughout the process that you can open up so you can read more about what those are in order to help you make your choices as you go through this whole process of define all the way to the report stage. So in this example, we're going to start with our response. Now our response is something that we're measuring. It can be yield that you want to maximize or cost that you want to minimize. But in this case, we've got peel strength that we want to match a target somewhere between three and six. Then we ha go to the next stage, which is the factors. Now I've got two kinds of factors here for this case study. The first are three continuous factors. So these are factors with a defined range and you can find them here in the lower and upper bounds. Those are the ranges that we're looking at for temperature, pressure, and speed. And then we also have a categorical factor here, supplier. So it's either supplier A, B, or C, and we can add them right here. To add a factor, you simply click one of these buttons, whether that's a continuous or categorical. And once you're happy with the response that you have and the risk factors that you're looking at, we can then go to the next stage. The next stage is then to choose what model to be estimate. Right now, it's ordered in terms of complexity. So you've got your most, uh, most basic model here uh, called a screening design where you're just looking at main effects. But as we go down here, we're adding some two-factor interactions, all the two-factor interactions. And on the bottom here is what we call a response surface design. This is an optimization design where we're looking at main effects, two-factor interaction, but also quadratic effects and nonlinear behavior. Now to choose which model to estimate, a good rule of thumb is to look at the number of factors that you have. If you're looking at a high number of factors like 10 or 12, the number of runs suggested here will start to increase quite dramatically from the screening design to the response surface design. At 12 factors, you're probably looking at a hundred number of runs or something like that. So a good rule of thumb is to first um, choose the model based on the number of factors you have. If you're looking at 12, what we recommend is to first screen through the factors because are all 12 factors really that important? Probably only a handful are. So we do a screen design first to narrow it down. And once you only have three, four or five factors, we can then run a response surface design to optimize those factors and look at the nitty gritty details of each of those factors. That will allow you to conduct an experiment with the number of runs that is practically possible. Once we've chosen the model to choose, we then get a design. This is what the software will generate because it's a DOE. Again, it's a multifactorial approach to experimentation. So we're simultaneously changing those factor ranges between different runs. This is then where we enter our data or perform our experiment. So we'll perform experiment one here, enter the data right there, perform experiment two, enter the data right there, all the way till 24. Once we've filled that in, we can then start to build our model. Now in here, we've got all our terms because it's again, it's a response surface design. We've got our main effects right here, our quadratic effects, but also our interaction between factors right here. Now, all of these terms are currently being included into the model. As you can see here, it's all green, but you'll notice that there's two kinds of lines here. There are some dashed lines, which means that these factors weren't actually that significant. And that means that, you know, when you go from a pressure of 2.2 to 3.2, it didn't really change our response as much. In fact, it only changes it by 0.16. So we can say that this is probably noise at this point. Now, what we want to do is we want to get rid of the non-significant factors so that we only have a general model such as this with only speed that is significant. And you can see here, as I hover my mouse, it says that this term is entered in the model and it is significant at an alpha value of 
So to remove this term, I can simply just click on it and you can see that that term for pressure has been removed and the estimate is zero. But if this is a step where you're quite not sure because this is your first time, there's this handy button here called best model that you can click. And once you click that, what jump does is that jump will line up all these terms in order of significance and start to removing them um, from the ones that are the least significant up to a certain cutoff. So then you're only left with a few terms that are significant. Now, whatever changes you make here will impact the prediction profiler. So this is a visual representation of our model where we can see how changing our variables here can influence our response. But also notice for supplier and speed here, as I change from supplier one to two, the slope for speed changes. So that is what we call an interaction between factors that we were able to capture with in this model. So in this case, pressure and temperature has no effect because we have removed those terms from the model. And that's why it's having no effect onto the response or any of the other factors. Now you can play around with this model to find what the best settings are for your desired response. Or again, you can click this optimize button and the software will make a prediction for you. And it says in this case, you know, a low speed of 32 with a supplier of two will give that peel strength that we want in the middle. This leads us to the report stage. So this is kind of just a summary of everything that's been covered. The prediction profiler was the output that we want. And in this report, what we get is a, um, a summary of the factors that we were looking at, our response, the data itself that we've collected, and of course, the result that we got from our prediction profiler. If we're happy with this result, we can then validate it um, in the laboratory or or if it fits our specification, we can then go straight to production and manufacturing to test this out. So that is the DOE workflow in a nutshell. Hope you can appreciate that it is quite intuitive as you go from one stage to the next. But of course, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your local jump contact. Thank you. Thanks, Owen, for that excellent summary of how easy DOE can further reduce the barriers to getting started with DOE. It's a powerful tool that even our more experienced DOE users get real value from as, because it encapsulates the entire DOE workflow for their team. Indeed, Stuart. Um, it is a very powerful platform, Easy DOE. And um, this, on the one hand side, certainly drives efficiency, but also is a good source for bringing up transparency and reproducibility when conducting experiments. 